Hey there, community, and welcome to the Providence Podcast. I'm Sister Leslie, and I'm so glad you're here. At Godspace, we have all kinds of ways to stay connected. So sign up for our newsletter and subscribe to our podcast wherever you get your podcasts. This week for our reflection, we have a special guest podcaster. Sister Fidelis Tracy will be leading us in a reflection on Adam and Eve and care of creation. So we'll get started with our scripture reading and go from there. A reading from the book of Genesis. The Lord God formed a human, an earthling, out of the clay of the ground and blew into its nostrils the breath of life. And so the earthling became a living being. Then God planted a garden in Eden, in the east, and placed there the earthling whom God had formed. Out of the ground, God made various trees grow that were delightful to look at and good for food, with the tree of life in the middle of the garden and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Now the serpent was the most cunning of all the animals that God had made. The serpent asked the woman, did God really tell you not to eat from any of the trees in the garden? The woman answered the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees in the garden. It is only about the fruit of the tree in the middle of the garden that God said, You shall not eat it or even touch it, lest you die. But the serpent said to the woman, You certainly will not die. No, God knows well that the moment you eat of it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like gods who know what is good and what is evil. The woman saw that the tree was good for food, pleasing to the eyes, and desirable for gaining wisdom. So she took some of its fruit and ate it. And she also gave some to her husband who was with her, and he ate it. Then the eyes of both of them were opened and they realized that they were naked. So they sewed fig leaves together and made loincloths for themselves. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Everyone is familiar with the story of creation in the second chapter of the book of Genesis. But there are some features of this narrative that are very relevant in terms of our treatment of the earth and our relationship with the earth. So the the story begins really with God seeing that the earth itself is not fertile because there is no human to till it. And that appears to be the reason for the creation of the human being. The human is created to till the earth, to make the earth fertile fruitful, to make the earth fertile. And this human is also created from the soil. So there is a tremendously intimate relationship between the human and the soil. The human created for the sake of the soil and created from the soil. And this is actually preserved in the pun that is used by the author to relate the human and the earth. So it says that God created Adam from Adama. These are just two different forms of the same word, a masculine and a feminine form of the same word, further indicating the mutuality, the tremendous relationship, the togetherness of the human and the earth. So uh, the earth is created from the earth in order to till the earth. And then God creates a beautiful garden to place the human in. And I'm going to call the human an earthling to preserve the um, relationship of autumn, autumn, earth and earthling. Uh, 
So God creates a wonderful, beautiful garden in which to place the earthling. And it actually says that it was filled with beautiful trees that were lovely to look at and refreshing in that sense for the human, but also good to eat. So the human is given the the garden with something that fills his spirit with beauty and is able to fill his body with nourishment or her body, the earthling's body. It's neither male nor female at this part. There's only later that we have Isha and Isha, male and female. So this garden then is beautiful and is nourishing. But a few verses later it says, And God placed the earthling there to till and care for that garden. Again, that mutuality, given a gift given, but a gift to be cared for, a gift to be encouraged, a gift to be enabled to be fruitful. Again, amazing mutuality between the human and the earth. So the, uh, the earthling then is in charge of this garden as well as nourished by it. The earthling also has a great dignity because the earlier part mentioned that the, earth, the earthling became alive only when God breathed God's breath into this earthling. And so the implication is that the very life of this, this earthling is God's life because they didn't have EKG and so on. How did you tell if something was alive? Well, is it breathing? So the breath the life, the breath, the life within this earthling is God's own life. So here is this wonderfully dignified earthling in charge of the garden and nourished by the garden. But lest this earthling believe that everything in that garden is at his or her disposal, there is a command given not to eat from one of the trees in the garden so that the earthling then is not free to just strip the garden of every bit of its fruit. The earthling must respect that the the, uh, fruit is not completely his or hers, is not completely there to be devoured. We We are meant then to use what is given to us, but to use it with moderation. Um, Perhaps the message for us is in terms of our environment. Uh, There are other interpretations, of course, of the tree of good and evil. But just for our purposes, there is a command not to take everything, not to deplete the, uh, the garden of all that it has to offer. We are meant with our knowledge. Uh, to increase the fertility of the earth. We are meant to use technology. We're meant to use everything to make the earth fertile and fruitful, but not to destroy the, uh, the garden. We are not to destroy the garden by taking everything. We cannot take from the earth without restraint. We must protect the earth. We must not take all of its produce. We must not reduce it to barrenness. The earth itself gives us the message that we must respect what is there. Uh, and we see that in some of the things that are happening in our, our, um, our world because of our taking too much and not respecting the earth. For, from our selfishness, from our, our focus on what we can have without a respect for what must be left for nature itself. We're responsible to care for the earth, to preserve it faithfully. And that would be the message in Genesis 2. And now let's continue our reflection together. So what resonates for you with this reading? What does care of creation mean to you? And is there anything more you can do to care for or nurture or protect creation?
As you've spent some time with this reading and listened to this reflection, is there a call for you in this or an invitation or something you just want to think more about? Maybe spend a little time talking with God about what this might be and listening to what God might have to say to you. Thanks for listening to the Providence Podcast. I hope you continue to connect with God's space and, of course, the Sisters of Divine Providence of Kentucky. As you enter this week, may you notice all the ways that God cares for you. And may we all take good care of each other. Peace.